This video will cover the assumptions of the t-test. Each statistical analysis you run has its own assumptions and it's important that you know and work through these before your analysis. It will only take you a couple more minutes and will ensure that your results are valid. Checking these assumptions can be done in SPSS. First I'll discuss the assumptions of the independent t-test and then those of the related. So first of all the independent t-test. There are six assumptions. The first is that the independent variable should consist of two independent groups. This could be student status, so our two groups could be undergraduate and postgraduate, it could be smoker or non-smoker, it could be iPhone user and Android user. The second assumption is that the dependent variable is measured on a continuous scale. This means that the level of data should be interval or ratio. Examples of interval and ratio data include time, weight, scores on an intelligence test or scores on an exam. The first thing you must do is look at the data you've gathered and be sure that it's measured on a continuous scale. Assumption 3. There must be independence of observations. This simply means there must be different participants in each of your two groups. Assumption 4. There should be no significant outliers within the data set. This means that each participant's data should follow the usual pattern, otherwise the results of the independent t-test can be affected. Assumption 5. The dependent variable should be normally distributed in each group. This can be tested on SPSS using tests such as the Shapiro-Wilk test of normality. Assumption 6. There must be homogeneity of variances. This basically means that the variance or the distribution of the scores around the mean within each group is equal. This is tested on SPSS as part of the Levine's test for equal variances. So next we move on to the related t-test. There are four assumptions for a related t-test. These are very similar to the independent t-test with a few differences that are worth noting. The first assumption is that the independent variable should consist of two categorical related groups. So this means that the two groups are made up of the same participants who have been tested on two occasions. This is often pre and post intervention. Assumption two is that the dependent variable should be measured on a continuous scale. This is the same as for the independent t-test. Assumption 3, again the same as the independent t-test, there should be no significant outliers within the data set. And assumption 4, the dependent variable should be normally distributed between each group.